Hi, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar with, um, with four great producers from Austria. Uh, we are going to give everyone just a few more seconds to uh, join and get settled in, and then we'll begin our, uh, our webinar about the biodynamics and the movement of uh, respect. Welcome everyone and thank you for uh, joining us today to, um, to have a conversation about uh, biodynamics and the movement of uh, respect. Uh, I'm here with uh, four of the uh, top producers in Austria. One of the things I um, wanted to emphasize today is that all of these producers, while they are, uh, biodynamics is a very important part of their farming uh, philosophy and their approach to to um, wine production. And these are also um, four, what I would consider elite producers in the Austrian wine scene. And so uh, let me do some uh, introductions here to, to begin. Uh, my name is Jesse Becker, Master Sommelier, and uh, I work for the import company Winebow. And we're very, um, very pleased to have uh, these four producers as well as a few who are not here today as part of our um, uh, Austrian portfolio. Uh, beginning with uh, Fred Loimer. Fred, uh, thank you for joining us. Fred is um, coming to us from Langenlois, which is the main winemaking uh, town of the Kamptal region of Austria, and uh, really one of the, the leaders in the biodynamic movement in Austria and one of the great producers of the Kamptal. And we also have Fritz Wieninger here today. Fritz is the uh, leading producer of Vienna. Uh, that should be a webinar all its own, just the incredible uh, vineyards and wine scene of Vienna. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, Fritz, you're one of the, the top producers there, and uh, we want to hear your story about how you came to, um, to work in the biodynamic way and to join the RESPECT group. Uh, we have Gernot Heinrich. Uh, Gernot is here from uh, Goals in the Bergenland region of, of Austria. Um, great red wines, but uh, also fantastic white wines and really um, has evolved to, uh, to a great natural wine producer. So thank you for joining us, Gernot. And also we have uh, Alex Sattler, uh, the, one of the newest members of the Respect group. Alex, welcome. Alex is joining us from Gamlitz in uh, the Sud uh, Steiermark region, so southern uh, Austria near the Slovenian border, and definitely one of the, the top producers there. So welcome and uh, welcome everyone. We want to encourage your uh, questions that you might have about uh, biodynamics. So I'll be monitoring the, uh, the Q&A. So please feel free to um, type your uh, questions into the Q&A and I'll, uh, we'll read those throughout and try to get, the, um, uh, get some answers for you uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, and I think what we wanted to do to begin uh, is to just kind of, of course, give you a, um, an idea about biodynamics and what it is. And um, maybe I'll I'll take that first part of the presentation here just to kind of um, give us a, an overview of the concept, but um, it is a system of organic farming, first of all, and um, biodynamics, uh, of course, there's no pesticides or herbicides here. Um, it, is, it is organic farming, but of course, there's things that are, are unique to biodynamics that sort of goes beyond um, uh, organic farming. One of those I already mentioned, this is what I wanted to have Gernot speak about a little bit today, but one of the concepts here is that the farm is a closed system. So uh, the farm being a sustainable sort of unit uh, and my example here is that, you know, of course, a farm produces crops, but oftentimes we have in biodynamic farming animals, very important uh, to the system. So we use some of the crops to, of course, then feed the animals, which then produce uh, manure. So we can produce compost, which we then fertilize the, uh, the, um, the crops with. So this is kind of the concept is that it's this um, very sustainable uh, uh, cycle. Um, yep, well, one of the uh, concepts here is that um, they harness the cosmic uh, energies. This is the one of those things about biodynamics that sort of can sound like pseudoscience until you sort of think about um, how things were done by, by our ancestors 
hundreds of years ago, you know, they, they would do things like following the cycle of the moon and um, you can still find these kinds of things in a, in a farmer's almanac. So um, there's, some, there's some real, might be pseudoscience to some, but there is actually some science to this as well. Um, and then one of the other things is uh, that I don't have bullet pointed here, but um, I'll have Alex speak about this uh, soil health and biodiversity. This is usually very important to, um, to most biodynamic uh, wine growers. Uh, and also, and oftentimes we're really curious about this, those, uh, those nine preparates or preparations that um, this is like the famous cow horn that gets stuffed and then the, um, you know, the matter is sort of diamondized and in water. So we'll, we'll touch on that uh, as well, but um, that's kind of the sort of general idea here. And all of this uh, really sort of came out of the, um, the thinking of Rudolf Steiner, who was a uh, uh, philosopher, Austrian philosopher, uh, who had different sort of stages of his career, but towards the end of his career was really thinking a lot about, um, about farming and ways to get back to very traditional farming practices. He witnessed the effects of the Industrial Revolution throughout his his life and delivered a series of lectures um, in the in 1924 and it was uh, it was all about these sort of concepts that we just spoke of and these concepts would then sort of become this um, this system of farming known as biodynamics and so that's just a, a way we we wanted to introduce today's topic but uh, we're really here to hear from the producers themselves and uh, to start um, we want to hear about respect uh, this group that all of all of these winemakers that you that are here today belong to and uh, I thought there would be no one better to do that uh, than to have Fred Loimer speak about sort of the origins and beginnings of of the respect group yeah uh, thank you Jesse uh, and uh, yeah hello from Austria hello from Langendorf from Kamptail and um, Thank you for, for, for getting that uh, possibility to talk a little bit about our work, our work in the, in the field, in the vineyards, in the cellar, and about the group, uh, which we founded um, already 15 years ago. So <laughs> that time passes by quite quick. Um, so I would say everything started um, um, the beginning of the, 2000s, uh, 2003, 2004, were a few of us starting to, to think about um, farming and uh, the way we farm at that time. And in um, 2003, 2004, I got in touch with, with Biodynamic um, as an idea, nothing more. And in 05, uh, um, I learned someone or I met someone uh, who was consulting biodynamics uh, in, in Europe already. He, he came from, from the States, he came from California. He helped Joseph Phelps changing to biodynamics and, um, and he worked at that time for, for Brooklyn Wolf and lived in, in Zurich. And uh, a friend of mine, Peter Malberg, uh, he's now in, in the Wachau. And me, we invited him to Austria. Uh, and uh, I will always remember that. It was uh, beginning of October in harvest 2005, uh, which was quite difficult harvest, uh, botrytis. And, uh, and so, he was here and um, we were talking about farming in a way, uh, a whole day. And in the evening of that day, I decided to change to biodynamics. So he was so fascinating uh, that um, this, was, this, was, this was completely clear for me, uh, we, we should change. Uh, but as a consultant, um, it was not so easy to do that alone. So. I asked a few, and Gernot Heinrich was one of them, um, if he has also interest in that. And uh, so we two, uh, me here in Langenlois and Gernot in Gols, we created two school classes with Andrew Loren, that was the name of the consultant. And uh, this was end of 2005. And uh, from, from these two groups, almost all of us um, start changing to biodynamic in, in 06. 
And you know, six we did that without any certification, without any uh, any organization. Uh, it was more um, two groups and learning month by month about biodynamic uh, as a group, and then also also in the wineries. And um, in 07, in 07, we or we learned in, in 06 that um, when you talk about biodynamics and when you talk about organic farming, um, it has to have a control system, a certification at the end. This is this is law. You can't you can't talk about um, I work organic without any certification. This is clear. It's important for the consumers at the end that they have to they have to be safe that what you what you talk about is really is real. And um, so in end of 06, beginning of 07, we start thinking about getting certification. And of course, there is uh, Demeter first. That's the address for biodynamics uh, in the world. Uh, it's the oldest uh, foundation and the old, oldest association for, for biodynamics. And um, so we got in touch with them. But we, we didn't feel so comfortable at that time, to be honest. They also changed a lot here in Austria in the last 15 years. But at that time, we didn't feel comfortable. And so we decided to do our own thing. And the own thing uh, got named in 2007. And this was uh, Respect. And at the beginning, it was uh, Respect inspired by biodynamics. And, um, and, and it started as an, as an association for uh, teaching, uh, for consulting, for taking seminars. Uh, so to learn about biodynamics from really from the base and up and also to meet on a monthly base uh, or even more. And one year we, we meet as a group um, to, to learn and to, to share our our thoughts to share our experiences we already had in at that time, and um, and in 2009, Respect got also an, uh, a certifying uh, body, um, which wasn't before. Uh, but in 2009, uh, we we decide to make Respect also to an um, to a label to a certification uh, body for for biodynamics and. Um, in the meantime, I would say also Demeter improved. Um, just, just, just to give you an idea, um, when we started, um, they had, so Demeter or the anthroposophic scene had some troubles with alcohol um, still at that time. And, uh, and today, 90% of all Demeter certified farms in France are wineries. So they, they improved a lot in the last 15 years. And, and so today, um, respect is uh, honored in the world of biodynamic, I would say, and is also working very close together with, um, with Demeter, uh, especially there's a biodynamic um, group and association in, in Donach in, in Switzerland. And they do a lot of lobbying work in European Union and in the world uh, for, for biodynamic and we join them and and I would say we, we work close together and and respect uh, in these last 15 years uh, was was growing at the beginning we were around 13 I guess uh, 13 wineries um, 19.5% in Austria, there was one from, um, or there is still one from Alto Adige, it's Manninko, uh, and um, Michael Enzenberg uh, is, is still, is, is our, our, uh, our president. And uh, there's one in Hungary, and since five or six years now, there is a group also in Germany uh, with uh, six uh, estates at the moment. And we will, we will grow, but the big difference between uh, Demeter and Respect today 
is that uh, RESPECT is only certifying uh, uh, wine growers. Um, it's easier for us, uh, to, to be honest. Uh, so we don't know so much about the rest of farming. Of course, we are interested in, and we, we are happy that uh, two members of RESPECT are also Demeter certified. So there's a good connection uh, to Demeter today. Um, but, but we as RESPECT, we said, it's easier for us only to certify wine, to get specified in a way uh, for wine, and to certify only wineries, which are thinking in a similar way um, and on the quality uh, side. So it's, it's important that you're not only working biodynamic in the field and uh, has, have a biodynamic thinking, uh, how you work and live. It's also very important that the quality at the end of the wines has a certain level. Um, it, it has to have a good individuality and a very good quality level. Otherwise you can't get certification of respect. And uh, Fred, I, I just put up the um, a slide with all of the current members, 25 members of the RESPECT group, and um, I'll put that up again in just a moment. But Pam is uh, asking a question here about, um, about whether you have to pay. Um, the, the question is, I'll just read it. What are the advantages of being a wine-based group rather than being Demeter certified? And does, your, so does RESPECT uh, have to pay Demeter to use the term biodynamic? Uh, no, uh, because um, biodynamic um, is only a description of a way of farming. And so in, it's only in the States where biodynamic um, is a trademark. Uh, and we hope that the International Biodynamic um, Association in Donach will find a way to open that also for us in the States to use biodynamic on, on the labels. But at the moment it's not possible because it's a trademark there, but in the rest of the world, biodynamic is a free term. So it's, it's possible to use it, uh, but we are working at the moment uh, together with Demeter International to get some, let's say basic rules and basic guidelines for the term biodynamic. So it's not absolutely free that everyone can use it without any, any, any certifications. So there should be some rule work or some guidelines in, in the back, but we don't have to pay Demeter, uh, but we, we, we um, make a commitment uh, with Demeter International that we will pay for lobbying work in the European Union, uh, so that we also be part about, about that, that we not only use biodynamic, so we also pay for lobbying work, but not for the term biodynamic. Thank you for that uh, answer, Fred. I wanted to um, hand it over to Fritz Wieninger because uh, Fritz, you and I have had some funny, interesting conversations about um, how you have uh, come to biodynamics. Um, I, I, I think it maybe would be fair to say you were skeptical a little bit, uh, but you have uh, embraced it as, as much as anyone in this uh, group. So um, this next uh, little part of the, the presentation is, is all you, Fritz. Um, can you help us understand how you uh, came to uh, came to this way of thinking and this approach in your uh, in your vineyards? Sure. Well, for me, uh, definitely uh, it was the case that I was trained very technical uh, and I believed uh, in the modern uh, developments uh, what were necessary as my teachers uh, at winemaking college taught me. And so I worked also my father uh, who trained me, I think he trained me well. Uh, he was more in the, the more modern way and this modern way meant uh, to be uh, following the uh, more the, the rules of the chemical industry and more, as more modern technology as possible uh, is to use uh, as little handwork as possible. This is the future until a year, actually the same year, 
2005, I did not attend this group, but I also had uh, this year uh, strong in my, in my mind uh, because 2005 as a difficult year showed me somehow that uh, with our conventional uh, farming methods, uh, we got into a dead end street uh, and this doesn't lead to success anymore. I started even to see in the vineyards uh, what we made wrong or uh, how strong the impact of uh, the spraying was. And I was looking for a way out of this, a way of uh, alternatives. And I found a friend in Vienna, a Demeter certified uh, wine grower, Stefan Heissan, uh, who helped me to change uh, or switch five hectares of my vineyards into biodynamic treatment. I had absolutely no idea uh, what was going on or what he did, uh, but I thought I wanna see how this uh, uh, is changing uh, my vineyards, how uh, the work would be, how the costs would be, how the quality of the grapes would be. And at the end, of course, what is the most important, how the quality of the wine uh, would be and after these two years 2006 and 7 I saw that well um, all I heard from these great teachers of the universities and colleges for wine growing uh, were uh, nice stories but not really the truth because the work was not really more uh, it was the same as you have to do it um, in in a uh, good uh, quality treatment is the same kind of work you have to do with the biodynamic work in the vineyards. And uh, on the other side, the, the yields uh, did not drop down by 50% or something. No, well, a little bit here down, a little bit up there, as it is used when you work with nature, uh, it's not always the same. Uh, it depends on the vineyard, it depends on the vintage. So um, for me, after these two years, there was this question, so what do you want to see now? You saw two years of changes. All the changes were in the right direction. Wines of more character, uh, wines um, of, of more interesting taste, uh, so let's get certified and well, the rest is, I made this uh, course uh, or seminars with Andrew, who was a, a splendid uh, translator of the philosophy of Rudolf Steiner, uh, a, a guy you probably cannot understand just like this. I, I tried to read books. I read books, but I, I needed to read them uh, two times, three times. And I didn't understand as much as I understood uh, during these seminars. Uh, th this opened my eyes and for me it was clear. Um, well, there was the question, why didn't I do that before? Why did I need so long uh, to step into this? This is what I want. This is much less esoteric as I thought before. This is much more based on hard facts. Uh, this is working with nature the right way. Yes, and um, I just put that quote from you, um, Fritz, that you said, I'm, I'm not an organic junkie, I'm doing this for quality and I'm achieving quality through uh, biodynamics. I love that uh, quote from you. Uh, and uh, yes, from all of our conversations, you never do anything halfway, Fritz. You always go, if you're going to do it, you do it always 100% uh, in the right way. <laughs> well, Dave, Dave um, oh, here. sorry, Fritz, go ahead. I think this is necessary. If you, uh, if you just decide to do something, you shouldn't um, think about it too much. Just do it. Uh, jump into it. The water is much less cold than you think before. Uh, if you don't go this path, uh, you never find out uh, what advantages you have uh, at the end of that street. And well, there is no end of that street. It's a long street and we, it's a path um, in, in reality. Uh, but the most important thing is I am happy with my decisions. 
I am happy with the quality uh, in, in my bottles, in my glasses. What I do today is what I really uh, was looking for. Uh, if everybody likes this is a different question, uh, but I like it, I am happy. And as long as I am happy, I think I will find enough other people that are also happy with this kind of quality and that's fine. Uh, first, uh, I have to say thank you, Fred. You're um, taking care of the Q and A. It looks like so. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Fritz, I thought I, I would ask you this question. Uh, Dave wrote me via email. Uh, he had a question about: um, Have you identified any vintage trends that you uh, attribute to climate change? And do you believe uh, biodynamic farming helps your vineyards adapt to these vineyard these trends of of climate change? I think definitely I can say yes uh, to this uh, question. Uh, I think biodynamic farmed uh, vineyards are much more in balance and balance is the key thing of today facing this climate change. Uh, there is droughts and these vineyards don't look that bad uh, because they are more fit, there is more hummus, there is deeper uh, roots going into the soil and sourcing other horizons uh, with water or nutrients. I definitely believe that biodynamic farming is the right answer on uh, the challenges of today. Uh, climate change uh, doesn't mean that it just gets warmer every year. Uh, the warmer uh, is the one thing, the drier is the other thing. Uh, there is a lot of effects, and I think that uh, the vineyards, how we treat them, are uh, much better in this uh, sometimes chaotic um, uh, vintages or seasons than other vineyards. I, you, I, I can see it when I look to my neighbors uh, with um, their conventional ideas, opening, plowing uh, the soil, uh, using uh, chemical fertilizers, uh, this leads only to more kilograms per hectare, uh, but not to more success, not to better quality of grapes, and of course not to better quality of wines. This, what we are doing is for sure the better idea. Thank you, Fritz, for that uh, answer. Um, Gernot, I'm going to move on uh, to you uh, because this idea of farming as a closed system is so... Um, important to the whole concept of, of biodynamic farming. And um, you, you and Heike work so much with, uh, with animals on your farm. And I thought you'd be the uh, perfect person to sort of um, help us understand this, this concept of farming as a closed system and, um, and uh, why that is so important to you. Let's see, getting out is Sorry about it. There you go. I would like to put a few sentences um, of Andrew, our consultant, um, in the beginning. And he made a definition of, of, of biodynamics and that says, biodynamics tries to follow the ideal of a whole farm system to become self-sustaining, self-healing and self-feeding. I think this is um, actually quite a modern concept of, of farming. And implementing, I think, all these organic substances which we are producing. I mean, we still have a lot of input, of course. We need um, we need um, energy, and we need also some plant protection. But of course, uh, there is a maximization, I think, of our own resources in our farm. And I think it's important to to develop this this feeling for these substances. And um, I don't think I had that before, before we started with uh, biodynamics. So it was kind of a developing process over the, over the years. And in the end, it was very logical for us to, to implement also the, the, the sheep uh, into our farm. And I thought it will be very difficult, but in the end, uh, it's so easy. First of all, because Heike is taking care of them and uh, she really loves them. And, um, I mean, the top number of sheep we had in the past was 100. So that was really sometimes hard work. But of course, we're using the, the sheep manure and we also do some 
associated work with um, pharma friends uh, nearby. So we're using the cow manure from, from the national park because Gold is very close to the, um, to the national park here, Noisy Sea. And they have about 400 cows uh, running around in the, in the wild nature. And only in winter time, they are using the, the compost, the, the manure, which we can use then. But also the reed from the lake and some other organic materials, the, the, the press residues, uh, what, we, what we use for, for compost, um, and, and also the leaves, the sedimented yeast, um, it's a perfect uh, nutrition for, for our wines in the end. And I think um, it's important to, to realize that um, to um, increase the carbon um, content um, in our soil is, is very important and it's, it's a major, uh, major goal for us too. So it's, it's a modern concept of farming and uh, this um, free R um, concept like uh, reduce, reuse and recycle. I think this is um, it's a, it's a perfect concept, which is um, it fits to the biodynamics as well. And I think uh, if it comes to um, this uh, forces working in, in a farm on Earth, it's um, it's the mineral um, forces, the etheric forces, the astral forces, and the ego forces. And this is this uh, sounds very theoretic, but uh, you see on the plant growth and how your vines are behaving that you are um, increasing the astral forces um, by working with um, sheep or other animals. And I think this, um, this observing all this um, um, uh, processes and cycles going on in nature is a very important uh, goal. Gernot, um, we had a question from Johanna, and this gets into um, winemaking, but I, I know that uh, you, uh, you take uh, a lot of your ideas about um, organic farming and biodynamics, and you want to bring that also into the cellar uh, in the way that you work. And Johanna is asking about um, how you work on very low levels of sulfur uh, in, your, in your wine. So the total sulfur is oftentimes very low. Sometimes you have zero uh, added sulfur. And she's asking about uh, what, what practices you implement in the cellar uh, to ensure that the wines are, are stable or clean. Um, what, would you mind just taking a, a side uh, route here and just talking about winemaking for you for just a second? I think the most important factor is to have healthy fruit coming in from the vineyard. And biodynamics uh, is helping us to balancing uh, the growth in the vineyards. So we never have, have um, really strong growth. And so we bring in this kind of resilience, this natural resilience with the grapes. That means we have um, thick uh, skin, small berries. And of course, these phenolic um, elements um, in the wine, they are stabilizing uh, the wine in a natural way. And it's, reduce, it's possible to reduce uh, the amount of sulfur um, while working in this way. And of course, we do also oxidation of the must to get, to get rid of this unripe uh, phenolic elements. So we do must oxidation. And that helps us in the end to produce a natural reductive wine. Of course, in the beginning, sometimes you have reductive uh, flinty uh, notes in the wine, but it will disappear and it will, um, um, yeah, develop very positive. Fantastic. Thanks for that uh, answer, Gernot. Um, I wanted to move on to uh, Alex Sattler because uh, we had actually a couple of questions already for you, uh, Alex, because uh, I think you may have, have said once that um, you weren't convinced that biodynamics were uh, for you. I know that you've been working organic for, um, for a long time, but to, to make the jump into biodynamics and joining the respect group, um, the question is what, what changed for you? Mm -hmm. And we also had a, a question about the challenges of, um, of working in a biodynamic way in Southern Austria and Such Steiermark where you are located. So this next part is, I'll hand it over to you. Um, uh, maybe the answers to those questions, but also okay. want you to speak about soil health and biodiversity also. So thanks very much. So um, 
I thought of uh, using, or maybe I can use the questions to, to actually come dig into this topic of soil health and biodiversity, because that was uh, basically the major uh, change of thought that we had in the couple of last years in our estate and in the head of myself, my brother and my, my parents. Um, so I'm working in an estate in the third generation now. Uh, we are taking over a, a big uh, evolution that has gone through the winery. Um, I think nothing is stable, uh, everything's changing and we can feel that right now very much. So um, for us, we had a time when we would say it's not, imp uh, it's not possible to work organic in Southern Styria. Uh, we thought in our quality um, approach, we cannot maintain the same quality while working organic because we work in such harsh conditions with a lot of rain, steep hills, uh, only possibility to work by hand. Um, but times have changed. Uh, our, our, our idea has changed. Um, yeah, that's just a, a picture of us, uh, our employees uh, in the vineyard, like um, making a new vineyard. Um, but so the things have changed um, and we, we dig deep into this topic and uh, actually for us it started in the, in the early 2000s uh, when we had an uh, at first intern in our estate. He was a sommelier coming to the estate saying he wants to work for half a year uh, to get some experience in winemaking uh, and then he stayed for six years at my father's place. Um, he, he was a big um, fan of Nicolas Jolie back then. And he was the first to, uh, before we, we were coming into contact with organic farming, uh, we got the influences of him at, of biodynamic farming. And we were at that time in the state of mind where we say it's not even possible to work organic. Um, so he, he changed a little bit the, the idea, the possibilities we, we saw in practice that it works. Uh, and the thing we saw it most was the compost. So uh, he, he had his own compost pile back then uh, we had our normal compost pile, so although we were not organic, we were already not using herbicide and working with compost. Uh, and we saw that this compost pile with uh, biodynamic uh, approach just worked much better. It was uh, making the, the vineyard more healthy uh, and making it more stable. And so we, we started thinking and when we start thinking, it takes a long time for us to come into thought with something. Uh, and uh, that's how our vineyards look like today. So the, a lot changed in the last years. Uh, we, we see our vineyards right now more than ever as a living organism. Uh, and Gernot already told a little bit about the, the connection of the animals uh, with, with the soil uh, that you can bring through humus, uh, through, uh, through compost or through animals directly. Uh, and we, we found that this living soil, the living things that go on in the vineyard, uh, that they are actually playing a big role in sustaining a great and healthy uh, crop, uh, healthy grapes that are very resistant to these harsh conditions of our area. So the thing that I learned in school when I, uh, I finished school in 2011, it's not that long ago, ago uh, we had a completely different mindset in learning about soil in learning about the stuff that goes on in the vineyards. So when I was in school, we learned uh, you get a plot of land and you, you drill holes inside and you, you see what's the nitrogen, what's the phosphor, what's the magnesium, like the, the, the elements. Um, and the thing that changed our thinking the most was not just the friendship with uh, all of the people that sit here and that have uh, a lot in advance in, in this way of thinking, but the thing that changed most was coming together with a, a scientist working in microbiome uh, science uh, that told us that this idea of school that we learned uh, was just the halfway of a soil uh, that you can see. And the other halfway is just the microbiome of each plot of land that you see that is not analyzed in a single way in, in uh, modern science. Uh, so that was the thing that we really put into consideration when we think about biodynamic practices, biodynamic thinking um, that leads to a greater diversity in soil of microbiome of stuff that you don't see, that you can actually see the results of, where you can see that the wines are growing healthier, they are growing more stable. And that was uh, one of the, the steps that, that came in between us, where we would say, 
this really makes sense in a in a like when when you think as a person that's very skeptical this makes a lot of sense and uh, when you start to think in this direction and dig deeper in the practices uh, that go along with the cycles uh, of, of nature uh, and also there's a big stuff we could talk about this for hours i think um, there's a lot of stuff that actually makes sense although you wouldn't learn it in your school um, and that was making us thinking uh, if a, a leading scientist tells us this is right although we learned it's wrong uh, then you should think uh, a little deeper in the in the topic and so it's everything about diversity in soil uh, that's that's making our wines more stable in the in the region in the harsh conditions so the the diversity in soil comes from uh, the connection of plants animals and these microorganisms and to get a, a balanced combination of these three um, it's a great way to to go with biodynamics um, and that that was the the basic idea that I see. Um, yeah, and we, we are very much vineyard people in, in our family. Um, so we really want to have healthy, self-sustaining vineyards. And um, the, the other extreme would be if you, if you fertilize with uh, liquid fertilizer, like a, a artificial fertilizer, um, that would be the classical approach where you say you, you lack of nitrogen, you want to have a bigger crop, uh, if you put nitrogen there uh, through the water, the wine takes it up in the system and it produces more grapes. And it actually works like that, but it's like feeding your children only with sugar so that you get the most energy out. Uh, it doesn't work in a long term. Uh, at some point, the, the people will get sick and the, the land will get sick uh, if you do it with fertilizer. And so you have to feed the microorganisms with animal manure uh, in whatever way possible. Uh, and plant plants there uh, besides wines, like different diversity of plants to get the greatest perspective in, in long-term uh, development of, of microorganisms. And this uh, scientist, she told us, uh, there is a one thumb rule in this whole study, the more the merrier. So uh, the, the more different microorganisms you have, the better it is because they keep it in balance and you don't get the uh, you get a little bit rid of problems that come along the way uh, otherwise. So, Thank you, Alex. Um, we've uh, gotten a lot of questions about the preparates. Uh, it's always a popular topic when it comes to biodynamics. I noticed um, Pam asked some great questions early on. Maybe Fred or Fritz, you've, you've already answered a few of these questions, but um, can we, uh, can we uh, discuss these for, we have um, maybe 15 minutes left, um, discuss uh, some of these preparates, how, um, how they're applied in the vineyard. Um, maybe should I hand that over to you, Gernot, to uh, speak about these preparations, uh, 500, 501? I'm gonna ask him to unmute here. Well, it's the same old story. <laughs> yeah, the two major um, feed spray preparates, 500 and 501, both are buried in this horn you, you saw uh, in the picture. But uh, we are not using these big ones anymore because we, we realized that uh, the smaller ones are, are much, much better. You're getting the better quality of uh, cow manure. And the cow manure preparate is uh, the using. Not, you mean the, the horn itself? You're using a smaller? Yes. Yeah. I guess this horn you can see here, it's uh, quite a long one. And those are coming from the, the, gray, um, uh, the gray cows here um, in the national park. But we prefer to use smaller ones um, because um, uh, it's turning, it's converting much better in a smaller, uh, with a smaller amount of cow manure. When you, when you fill it, um, it doesn't have the best smell in the beginning, but when you dig it out in spring, then it, uh, it smells like um, uh, forest soil. So it's really converted. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a miracle uh, every year. And um, the horn is taking this cosmic um, astral forces um, I was talking about previously. Um, and it's taken into the ground. We dig it into the ground over the winter month because the, the energy of the earth 
and everybody knows that it's warm uh, if, if you go down uh, about a meter into the earth and then it still can um, happen that um, that all the animals are alive there um, the worms and everything they're going down to one meter into the earth and that's also the place where the converting of the cow manure to this um, uh, um, preparate um, takes place and uh, this we do in, in over the winter time and the silica preparate the 501 preparate we produce um, over the summer months so it's um, fine grounded um, crystal of the mountains silica and we also dig it in the ground from uh, march to september and then you see the process of dynamization here we use just a um, homeopathic um, amount of this material and we are transmitting our consciousness our spiritual forces to to this preparate which is very important uh, and in a perfect way that you do it uh, the stirring by hand uh, over an hour and you're forming this kind of vortex uh, to the bottom of uh, of this pot and i think this is also kind of a meditation uh, process when you do it um, early morning and so then the preparations 500 501 um these are the the ones that are dynamized in water and they're they're applied to the vineyard as a spray yes um 500 uh, you're spraying in big drops on the ground just for um, build up this um, living in the soil and uh, to enhance the microorganism or the microbiome uh, alex was talking about and that's the the process we're doing in a few weeks when everything starts to grow outside to yeah, to support all this uh, growing processes in spring. And um, yeah, we do two to three sprayings from um, April to July or to end of June. And then we start with um, 501, the silica preparate. And um, it's the preparate of the light forces. So it's, it's collecting the the sunlight, the light forces, and it's um, spread over the leaves. And it's also protecting the vines against um, fungi because it's drying out the surface a little bit. And it's balancing the, the growth processes and the ripening processes. Um, and then uh, I grouped the, the others together just because they're, um, they're all applied to the vineyard through uh, compost. But uh, they all, of course, um, have a different uh, purpose. And maybe uh, we could ask who would like to, to um, maybe explain a few of these. Uh, Fritz, Alex, Fred? I'll call on you, Fritz. Uh, I didn't understand the question because I was just uh, looking at the at the, at the chat. <laughs> And the Q and A. <laughs> Can you repeat? Yes, I was just wondering. Um, with the preparates five hundred two through five hundred eight, these are the ones that um, are applied to the vineyard through compost. And um, could you? I know each of those serves a different purpose, but could you um, explain maybe the way you prepare those and uh, what what purpose they serve? Well, I think I am the wrong one on this because I'm buying these uh, preparates and I'm using them for my compost, uh, but um, I'm not producing them myself. Maybe one of the, in the group produces them uh, himself. Well, it's for sure easier to... Uh, well, we, we have a, a picture here of um, Gernot working with um, stinging nettle. So Gernot, um, can you explain yes, what uh, we're looking at this in this case um, it's just the nettle tea which we are spraying on the on the soil um, most of the time we're combining it with the preparate 500 uh, which is um, perfect for me to do it in this way but uh, i think the the very important compost preparates um, um, we can mention them. It's the oak bark, uh, the chamomile, the yarrow, the stinging nettle, the dandelion, and the valerian um, preparate uh, from 502 to 507. 
And these are quite complicated uh, to produce. And every single preparate of them, um, they have a relationship to calcium, to nitrogen, to phosphor, potassium. So they are responsible for different processes. But in the end, they are kind of balancing everything. And they are kind of um, mediators. We can call them mediators uh, of um, all the forces going on. Uh, excellent, thank you. And um, like I said, the reason I grouped those uh, preparates together is because they're all applied to the uh, vineyard through compost. I think that's uh, a photo that you gave us, Fred, of, um, of uh, compost that you use in your vineyards. Uh, yes, uh, but we, 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 we changed our way of composting a little bit at that time. This was the first year, I think, or seven. Um, so where we only made layers and then um, then started the the process and let it like it is and wait for a year today we we um, we steer it um, almost every week when the when the process is started and with that technique we get a much better compost today um, more more cleaner more more harmonized and uh, much easier to to bring in the field uh, so we changed it a little bit but we still have uh, at the end of the process straw straw on top to to protect the the compost uh, while it's sitting um, to to get a higher quality um, I have to say thank you to uh, Fritz and Fred for helping me with the Q and A. Um, that would have been way too many uh, questions for me to answer. I, I do notice one here from uh, David, and he's asking if there's any scientific evidence that biodynamically treated composts have any advantage over their organically treated counterparts. There, there is, there is. Uh, so, sorry for that. There is uh, in in Geisenheim. Uh, a vineyard uh, since uh, 2006 um, uh, run by, by Georg Meissner. Um, they divided that vineyard in, the, in, in 06 in three parts, um, conventional farmed, organic farmed and biodynamic farmed. And uh, the difference in, from organic farming to biodynamic farming are only the preparates. So using compost with uh, preparation and using the field preparates and they could measure differences. They could measure differences in the growth itself. So um, it's very, very interesting to see the length of the, the shoots are shorter in the biodynamic field, but the weight of uh, the wood is the same as in the organic. And also the the uh, the amount of uh, worms, for example, is the same uh, organic and biodynamic, but the diversity of the worms is higher in the biodynamic. So there is there is uh, for sure an influence of the of the preparates. Um, thank you, Fred. And we have a, a question for you, Gernot. Um, are you using alternatives to copper sprays in the vineyard um, due to the sheep? Um, could you touch on that? That comes up a lot, um, the, the use of coppers in organic and biodynamics, but um, I'll have you speak. We are, we are reducing the copper amount year by year. And uh, I mean, we have the, the great advantage that we are in a very dry area. So downy mildew is not the, the biggest issue. But of course, uh, in years like 2010 uh, or uh, 2008, in the very beginning of the of our um, biodynamic um, treatments, uh, it was difficult, and uh, and we're spraying horsetail tea that um, that helps also and can replace copper. But uh, we try to stay between one kilogram, 1.5 kilogram per hectare per year. And in dry years, it's uh, sometimes even less. Yeah. So and, 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 we, we, and, we're, we are learning year by year. And, and you have to know today we're using 1.5 to 2 kilos, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. 
but the uh, European Union is allowing four kilograms at the moment. And um, uh, only two years ago, it was uh, six kilograms in France and Italy and Spain. Uh, and in the very past, so 60 years ago, it was 30 kilograms they were using and more. Uh, so we're talking about really, really very little. And so far as I know, it's not a problem for the sheep, uh, the amount we are using today. Um, and they are, anyway, they are not in the vegetation period in the field because they would damage or they would harvest uh, earlier as we would harvest. And uh, so they, 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 are, they are coming in the fields, in the vineyards after harvest, uh, when a lot of the leaves uh, already fallen down on the soil. I love this. Uh, oh, sorry, Gerna, go ahead. And I think that if there is a problem with copper, it's coming from the past. As uh, Fred was uh, mentioning, I think it was much more copper used up to 10, 15 kilograms. And so sometimes there is still, still a lot of um, copper in the, in the topsoil. And so the cover crops, they are taking the copper also. And then if sheep um, are eating it, uh, you can have a problem. But uh, we don't have any problems. I love this question from Maria. She's asking if, uh, if any of you have noticed a difference in the longevity of your wines since switching to biodynamic farming. Interesting uh, question. Uh, does it make a difference in terms of their, their life, the wine's uh, longevity? I think there is a positive, a very positive effect uh, because of this um, fine tannin structure, fine grain tannin which is um, keeping the wine in perfect shape for a long time. And of course, our, our yield is much lower than it was uh, 20 years ago uh, because we had uh, much more vigorous wines and yeah, less concentration in the wine. And so it was, the aging potential was not that good um, at that time. Fritz, did I, I you? Think, I think oh, go you, ahead, Fred. I think you have you have a much better physiological ripeness in biodynamic vineyards. This is very easy to see for everyone when you walk through. And because of that, and because of um, spontaneous fermentation, you get a higher complexity of the wines. And that's why these wines are much longer living as, as conventional wines, for sure. Yeah. Fritz, Even with you, very low sulfur. Did you have a comment on that, Fritz? Maybe I'm not sure about it, but uh, as Gernot says, uh, if you do this really serious um, and compare it to um, a farming method with uh, chemical fertilizers and higher yields, of course, these wines will age much better and will uh, be uh, fresh and young much longer. Uh, but I'm more with Fred. Um, I think the biggest difference is uh, the more multi-layered characteristics of the wines uh, and also the better physiological ripeness. That means that uh, the fruit is mature with lower sugar content. I saw that uh, in my beginnings of, of, the, of switching over to biodynamics uh, that suddenly I didn't need to wait that long to get uh, physiological maturity and ended up with lower alcohol. And this is a key question in the climate change that we are able to harvest a bit earlier than before, because if you have to wait until the last possible day, you will have the light wines with 14 plus alcohol and uh, only that they are really mature uh, from the tenants and so on. And this is what nobody absolutely nobody wants, not we and not you out there. Uh, and that is for me the biggest effect uh, by uh, the biodynamic farming. Uh, Alex, uh, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, maybe I just wanted to say because we had the experience uh, when a friend of ours, he didn't have a, he was building his cellar. Uh, we had one year where we had, uh, um, got the fruit from him to make it in our cellar and uh, give it back to him because he didn't have a, a, a cellar. 
And so I was able to taste uh, the same area, the same village uh, with uh, organic. I cannot tell for biodynamic because we're too short in it, but for organic, at least I, I could tell that analytically his wine would have been more ripe. He had more sugar. Uh, he, he harvested it, although he harvested it earlier than our grapes, uh, but when you tasted it, the tannin structure was completely missing. Uh, and I think that's something that has to do with the, the, the amount of um, um, skin in a berry, like the, the berries, they get a little smaller. Gernot already uh, told about it, that berries get smaller, they get a little bit more loose, they don't get pushed against each other too much. Uh, when you worked in a like sustained yield, um, so so I, I could tell that the, the structure of the wine was pushing more in the direction of long living, living uh, of long aging. Fantastic. We've had uh, so many great uh, questions from our audience. Uh, we tried to get to as many of those questions. Um, the panel has given us an hour of their evening and uh, we used every minute of it. So I, we, we really appreciate your time. I want to thank the panel, uh, Fred Leumer, Fritz Wieninger, Alex Sattler, and Gernot uh, Heinrich. Uh, we Hopefully we answered most of those questions. If there's any that we missed, we'll, um, we will get back to those in writing. Uh, but thank you to, to all of you for your time and for uh, helping us learn about, about biodynamics and the RESPECT group. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.